Rose. Nice to meet you. And um, I'm really grateful to be part of the Art Tribe. And I wanted to welcome you to my kitchen table studio. Um, I do actually have another studio, which I'll be going to tomorrow and I'll show you that one when I get there. But um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about me. Um, my name is Leslie Humphrey. And uh, you might know me if you're in the Art Tribe and you look frequently as the horses that pop up from time to time, those abstracted horses. And um, I'm really grateful for Find Your Joy in Art Tribe for helping me push the boat out more and more. Really grateful to be in this community. Uh, it's been great for me. A um, little bit about me. Um, I've been painting and drawing or sculpting clay from the stream as long as I can remember. Don't remember when I wasn't. Because horses to me are everything and they've rescued me. It's been a magnificent journey. Um, and and it's, it's, uh, it, it's brought me a lot of rewards, a lot of great rewards. But, but really none of that matters um, if it doesn't help anyone, <laughs> I don't think. And so that's why I am, again, particularly fond of this group because you all and Louise and Tracy, everyone is so helpful and thoughtful. And, um, and I love that. So, um, so I thought, well, what would be helpful to you about my studios and my journey? So I've got two things. I grew up in Lancashire, just outside of Wigan, and um, I, I live now mostly in Texas, in just outside of Houston. And I've raised three children. And what I want you to know most about me, that nothing stopped me from painting. Not having three small children, I would get up at four o'clock in the morning to be painted four hours before they got up at eight. Um, and when my husband asked me what I wanted for my 31st birthday, I was a paralegal at the time and I told him, well, sit down because I want to paint and I've never really learned how. And um, he, he did need to sit down. <laughs> It's like, oh, I was going to, I was going to manage, but, but we did a leap of faith. It was a tremendous leap of faith. And, um, you know, we get so many setbacks, we get so many knockbacks and particularly women, um, you know, it's not, not being unfair to you men, but it, for women, it's, it's, it's particularly difficult from our era, I think, to bust out of the pattern that they want to put you in. So, so anyway, off we went and I've never really looked looked back. I am really known as an oil painter, to be honest with you. But when my husband retired about 10 years ago, he said, Oh, now, Leslie, you can concentrate on your painting. And, um, and I, uh, he, what he failed to add was if you've only got 10 minutes. <laughs> so, well, that's made me switch to watercolors, but I never took a watercolor class. I just use my watercolors very much like I do my oils. So, and it, the speed and rapidity of watercolour and that you can do it small and condensed and it can dry instantly really lent itself to the travelling that we were about to embark upon. So I thought, and I always keep, I think they're so precious, I always keep them here at the house. So I have this little setup that's my travelling kit and my watercolour that all fits in one bag. And uh, I thought that would be really useful to show you. I'd like to show you my art kit, my traveling art kit. This is it really. These are all transparent colors and I have two gouaches. And so that's all I need and that folds up nicely and fits into my, my little bag that I got in South Africa. And then these are my lovely paint brushes. Look how gorgeous they are. Love them. And some of them are just, you know, chopped off bristles because like I said, I'm an oil painter usually. And um, I'm, I'm used to those. Those are my drawing supplies. These are my little Caran crayons, my little set. And these are my Caran pencils, which, you know, if I've got room in my suitcase, I'll stick them in as well. So I usually take a little arch block um, if I need that. Now this, these are lovely. These are by an, um, an actually a book binding artist called Laurel West. Uh, from the Isle of Skye. 
you can look her up and you can buy one of these. Now, they're not cheap, but, you know, you put so much money, don't you, on your frames. Why not invest in your art journal? And so whenever we go somewhere or, you know, um, I'll sketch people that we're seeing. I might just pick up ephemera from the beach. I love to go to jazz concerts with my husband or out seeing the horses with my friends and um and, and I, I might draw any manner of things that will just remind me of the places that we've been and um i'm very quick at sketching so you know it's 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 not um i just i just need to get enough that i can remember you know that day so this is for 2018 and this is 2019 over here, and I've got one 2020. 21 was too busy because my mother was very ill. And this is the sort of thing that that I make. Now, this is a tiny little book because we were in South Africa and traveling around. So, you know, I just didn't want to take something very large, but we had some, you know, truly magnificent experiences there. And um, at a game preserve and the things that he saw and not the least of which Tulani he was over he was in prison with um, Mandela and he showed us around Robin Island what a privilege anyway elephants you know um, it's, it's just a wonderful way to capture these very rare moments in your life now this is um, one of my travel journals that I means gosh it's 15 years ago now and I, what I do is I pre-prepare the page and, uh, and then I'll, all I have to do is, 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 is sort of draw them or paint them with a little set. Now these are acrylics believe it or not. Then I got them all signed for my husband. I thought that was, you know, he was, he was really pleased about that. Now this is what I've been doing, you know, since um, being in the art tribe, you know, I found out about uh, you know about these concertina sketchbooks by C. White and I learned about those from you guys so thank you so much and as you can see I, I pre-prepare the page so at least I don't have to do that so at least I have a design that I can work into and um, this was a trip to Peru where I got my COVID <laughs> so that wasn't very good but anyway so this is this is the one that's in progress and ready to ready to begin painting on right away. Sometimes what I will do is I will gesso the paper ahead of time. And this is because I'm an oil painter and I like to remove as much as I add. So, <laughs> um, also something else that I learned from you is um, these, you know, how to, how to make these cards. This is for my daughter, I thought it would be nice. She got married in November. So I cut up a sheet of watercolor, oh gosh, look at that. Cut up a sheet of watercolor paper and I'm going to record what happened during the wedding and give it to her when she comes and sees me. So that's uh, that's what I'm working on at the moment. And uh, this is my kitchen table. So you can see my full set of Karandash and my favorite paintbrush softeners. And, and that's it. And it all fits in that bag there, all of it, believe it or not. So that is my kitchen studio and I will take you to my oil studio tomorrow. So this is where I have my studio. That Da Vinci local artist, we own that and there's my studio up there. This is where I do my oils, where I'm not concerned about fumes. I can open the door, it's on a second floor, which really helps. And so um, I'll just show you around. It's a little messy, but you know, studios are very often, aren't they? So those are my pencils and some of my bigger brushes, mark making tools. These are some of my watercolors that I, I like to go to figure groups, but I'll go with pre-prepared paper and I'll enjoy and, and mess them up and have a great time dripping salt and all sorts on them, dotting them with papers. And, um, and then I just, um, just draw the figure with my Karandash crayons and then, you know, just design and enjoy myself. 
So this one, actually, this one I did when COVID hit and I was, you know, 5,000 miles away from my girls who live in England and uh, was, you know, nobody knew what was happening then. So that was scary. So here's more. And this is, this is one that I've done last week and it's on Ampazan panel. It's again, watercolor, which I then will seal with uh, beeswax. This is one I've been working on for two years. Um, it's a very, very sad story about a remarkable mare from Lexington, Kentucky. And my mother was suffering and at the time and there was just so much that was relatable to the story and I've not, not really, really been able to finish it. And I'm hoping that, you know, that I can I, soon anyway. But um, now these are some paintings which are mine that I've done for my daughters who modeled for me. And some, they belong to my mentors. Um, I just, you know, like to have some of my, my great mentors around me. There's an Alex Powers behind the big painting. Um, and these are, you know, paintings in progress. Now these up here, they're oil paintings of my, that, that I did when my sister died. And I painted the four seasons of her life because I felt like she hadn't had them. And they just poured out of me. They were really a way of grieving, but in actuality, a new aesthetic was born when I was brave enough to go forth. So I've not been able to sell those. I think my daughter's going to have them. I tend to be very organized. I've got my watercolors, as you already know, at the house. These are my box of acrylics, so I can just take them with me if I want to. Um, this is my smaller oil painting station. I like to be very, very organized actually, and I've not been in this studio. I've not worked in it for about three or four months because I've been in England with my daughters. So getting ready to get get cracking again. I love um, toolboxes for the art studios. They're very, very handy. This lifts up, but I've got my turp on it right now. You know, this I store extra paints in. This I store some, you know, rather interesting photographs and things that I've taken over the years. Back when we used photographs, I used to always like to get big ones because it's so much easier than painting with a postage stamp, but there you go. So I thought I'd tell you where I am with my art. Um, it's been an incredible journey. And, um, you know, horses, they really transmit my emotions to the canvas. They, I always, can, if, I, if I can't, if I can't think of something that I, that I really passionate about, there won't be any horse paintings. But what I really want to do, I'm never satisfied by the way, and I never think I've made it. You know, you never think that. It's always the next thing. And um, I, I really love what you all do and Louise does. That freedom, that freedom to uh, not have to do an image. I mean, I do love painting people when I'm out and about. Love, love that. Love playing with the paint. Love that. But I really love abstracts. I mean, I really do. And that's why I went to Louise's course. And I think, I think years and years of, you know, paying, helping to pay and contribute to the family and running this place for a while and, you know, paying for employees, you had to keep selling. And that, um, that had a negative effect sometimes because you know you, you didn't really have a chance to even think about well what what do I want to do so I really I've got um, a week's workshop with an artist called Joan Fullerton it's completely abstract and that's going to be in um, two weeks time so I'm so looking forward to that I'm just going to crank them out I'm telling you so, uh, and I do do abstracts, by the way. All my cards, every card, time I send a card to somebody, they're all abstracts. Um, birthday cards, anniversary cards, Valentine's cards, they're all abstracts. And um, I just, I just, I just love them. So that's where I want to go. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why a lot of things happen in life, but I always go with my gut. And my gut tells me I have got to, I've, I've got to release the image and know who I am without the image. And it just be pure emotion on the canvas. I over-design as well, I can't help it. Don't seem to be able to help it.
sometimes you can know too much maybe I don't know but also I think it's worth sharing that one of my really great mentors Alex Powers his name was um, he looked at some of my work that I did about 10 years ago 12 years ago and then he looked at those that occurred after which I've been trying to sort of break out um, and go back to that place and he said what happened you know between here and here boom my sister died and he said Leslie when life becomes difficult and untenable um, and we can't cope with what's going on we tend to want realism we went, tend to want to encapsulate things and you know we tend to take a step backwards sometimes especially in our art or we just want things to be recognizable again and I think that's where we are maybe as a world maybe um, so anyway I'm <laughs> I can't help it I'm complicated so um, anyway I love painting and I love seeing what you do I love the marks I love the energy which is I think really what it's all about what energy is in the, the piece excuse me anyway um again I can't say enough how grateful I am to be in the art tribe and it's really setting me free in ways that nothing else really has so I'm super grateful and uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, getting to know me a little bit and seeing my, my way of working. And I hope some of it helps you. So let me know if you have any questions. All right, bye, thanks again, bye.